everyone, I hope you're well. Let's talk about choosing your courses in law school. Creating your law school schedule is an art, and I believe it is an art you must master. In your first year of law school, at least that's how it was when I was in law school, you won't really have much of a say in what your schedule looks like, but you will in your second and your third year. So I'm going to share with you how I personally chose my classes in law school. I'm also going to share a few tips and tricks and lessons that I learned along the way. If you're new here, hi, my name is Aisha. I'm a lawyer and entrepreneur based in Montreal, Canada, and I make videos about becoming a lawyer, going to law school, entrepreneurship, productivity, and a variety of other topics. Let's start with my philosophy when it comes to picking your courses in law school. I believe that you should build your schedule based on five elements. Interest, schedule, professor, evaluation format, and complementary knowledge. Let's start with the most important one in my opinion, which is interest. What you're going to do is you're going to pull a list of all of the courses that you can take next semester. And this is very important. I used to take a lot of classes in law school that my peers didn't even know existed. So in order to be able to make an enlightened choice, it's really important to know everything that is offered at your law school. So you're going to pull that list and you're going to ask yourself, what am I interested in? And an interest can be based on multiple things. For instance, if you already kind of know what kind of law you would like to practice, then obviously you can take courses that relate to that practice area. Maybe the course description caught your eye. Maybe you're looking to take classes about different practice areas to figure out what it is that you want to do later on. Regardless of the reason, I believe that you should choose your classes first and foremost based on your interest. The second thing you're going to want to look into is the schedule. When are those classes given? And this is very important because you want to choose classes based on when you're going to be the most attentive and based on when you're the most productive. And this is not always easy to figure out. And I'll give you an example. I'm a morning person. I love being up in the morning. I like to be up early. And I am personally most productive in the mornings. However, whenever I had afternoon classes, I felt like the day would just go by so quickly. I felt like I didn't really have any time to do anything before I had to start thinking about getting to school. Afternoon classes just weren't working out for me. And so what I did is that whenever possible, I would take morning classes and that would allow me to use the rest of my day as I wanted to. Either to study, to draft papers, to work on extracurriculars, whatever it was, I felt like I had the most hours when I took morning classes. Now, keep in mind that you're not always going to be able to pick classes based on schedule. Some courses are only given once a week by one professor. Some courses are only given, you know, once a year. So while it is something that you should look into, it's not always going to be possible to do that. The other thing that I used to do is try to build my schedule in a way that I would have days off. If I had enough flexibility and enough courses to be able to have one or two days off, I would do that because I would prefer having days off that I could just organize however I wanted than, you know, having classes in the morning every single day. Before I move on to the next element, I want to take the time to say, and this is my opinion, that I believe if there is a class that you're really, really, really interested in, and it's only given once, and it's not at your preferred time, it's only given by one professor, take it regardless of the schedule. I believe you're better off taking a course about a topic that lights you up, about a practice area that you're really interested in, than taking a class that you just feel meh about, but that you're taking because it's at a preferred time. The third element I would look into is the professor. Who is the professor giving the course that I'm looking into and how are they? And there are multiple ways to try to get a better idea of how they are. You can ask around, you can ask your friends, you can ask your peers if they've already had courses with that professor, you can ask them how they were, what their experience was. If you don't know anyone who has taken that class before, you can also look on Rate My Professor to see if there is anything about that particular professor. You just have to keep in mind that the best way to truly know how a professor is, is to actually take a course that is taught by them. So just take everything that you read about a professor with a grain of salt. I would also look into whether or not there are classes that are given by a professor that you know and that you've had before. I remember this international law professor that I had when I was in law school at University of Montréal. He was loved by a lot of students because he was very nice, he was funny, but a lot of students also had an issue with him because of his requirements and um, his standards when it came to drafting papers. He was very specific about the way that he wanted papers to be drafted. He liked very short papers. He had a character limit, not a word count limit, a character limit. He wanted papers to be drafted in a certain way and most students just didn't get it. But I had taken a class with that professor and I had ended up doing quite well, at least compared to my peers. And so I ended up picking two additional classes 
that were taught by this professor because I knew that I was going to do well in his class. I was familiar with what he wanted, how he taught, his expectations. And so if there's a professor out there that you love, that you are comfortable with, and that you know you're going to do well with, then I would suggest looking into that. I know I'm repeating myself, but I do have to say this again. In my opinion, interest trumps all. I would only look into who's giving the class if the class is mandatory, if the class is a part of a list of classes that I have to choose from because I have to meet a certain number of course credits. If a course I was interested in was given by multiple professors, or if I didn't mind switching that class out for another class. Otherwise, if there was a course that I really, really, really wanted to take, I would take it regardless of who the professor was if that professor was the only one giving the course. The other thing that I looked into, and in my opinion, this is after interest, the most important thing, and it is evaluation format. Would I have to write papers? Would I have to write exams? Would I have to do oral presentations? I would always look into that. And the reason why I did this is because I realized very early on that I wasn't great at taking tests, but that I was quite good at drafting papers. I'm really comfortable with research. I've always been really comfortable with drafting, organizing my ideas. I just, I don't test well and that's okay. Exams also made me really anxious. And so whenever I could, I would always favor classes where I had to draft papers. So how do you find out what the evaluation format is? Well, there are multiple ways to do that. Sometimes the course description will give it away. If you're looking into a course that is given by a professor that you've had before, sometimes that professor will mention at some point their preferred evaluation format. I had a professor who often said that he hated exams and he would never give his students exam. And so I definitely took a few courses with that particular professor. And of course, you can always ask your friends and your peers. But yeah, I did give evaluation format a lot of importance because it allowed me to manage my stress and it was a way for me to improve my chances to get a better grade. Finally, the last element I'm going to talk about in this video is complementary knowledge. Let me explain. I always ask myself, what classes can I take to enhance my knowledge about a certain topic? And this is particularly important if your law school allows you to take classes that are given outside of the law faculty. I'll give you an example. I always knew that tech was an industry that I was interested in. I knew that tech law was a practice area that I was really interested in. And so at UDM, we were able to take two um, classes that weren't given at the law faculty. And so I decided to take an intro to coding class. I knew that taking intro to coding would be beneficial for me down the line because it aligned with the practice area that I was interested in. And to be quite honest, I also knew that it would catch a lot of law firms' eyes. So when asking yourself what classes you can take to enhance your knowledge, think, of course, about classes that are given at your law school, but also classes that are given outside of your law school, if possible. So for instance, if you're interested in entertainment law, then of course taking a contract drafting class is going to be really helpful, but also maybe taking a public relations class. Don't forget that law school is your chance to learn and to explore before actually you know, going into the real world, so do take advantage of that. Now, some final tips to keep in mind when choosing your courses in law school. Do not take courses you're not interested in just because those topics are going to be on the bar exam. Please do not do that. I did this once, and I think I spoke about it in my uh, law school mistakes video. Just don't do it, and I'll tell you why. One, if you're anything like me, if you don't care about a topic, you're not gonna do well in the class. That's how I work, might be how you work. Second thing, the class you're forcing yourself to take is taking the place of another much more interesting course in your schedule. Third reason, if you're in Quebec and you have to go to bar school before taking the bar exam, you're going to see those topics in bar school anyway. And to be quite honest, the way that the law is taught in bar school and the way that it is presented in the bar exam has nothing to do with how it is taught in law school. So if there's a course you're really, really interested in and you're hesitant to take it because there is another course that you think you should be taking because that topic is going to be on the bar exam, take the interesting course. And don't forget that you're never going to be able to take that course once law school is over. Second tip, and I've mentioned this before briefly, but take everything that your peers say with a grain of salt. Law school is competitive and people tend to project their fears onto you whether they want to or not. Had I listened to everything my peers said, there are a lot of courses that are very, very useful to me today that I would have never taken. And now I'm really thankful that I took them. And my final tip, which is really a tip that you can apply to your entire experience in law school, and that is that nothing is the end of the world. 
It's not the end of the world if you weren't able to take that class you really wanted. It's not the end of the world if you weren't able to build your schedule the way that you wanted. If you're not able to get some days off, if you're not able to have all afternoon classes, if that's what you wanted. It's not the end of the world. Just breathe and it's all going to be okay. That was it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it useful. If you liked this video, do not hesitate to like and to subscribe. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye!